All right, let's take a look at question eight. In question eight, we've been assessed on how to generate or write polynomial functions from graphs using roots. Problem eight reads, a polynomial function is graphed below. So we have the graph of a polynomial function right here, okay? The question is, which function could represent this graph? So we have four options. So now, um, the question is, what is the connection? How can we connect this graph to the polynomial function or related polynomial equation? The connection is as follows. Let's note the following point. So one thing you want to note is that the, uh, the x-intercepts, okay? The x-intercepts of the graph um, of a polynomial what's the significance of the x-intercepts oh wait they are the um, they are the roots also known as the solution roots or solutions or you can call them zeros too which are solutions to the polynomial equation to the polynomial function okay alright so what does this mean well that means that we just have to follow the following steps we'll extract what the x-intercepts roots or solutions are from this graph we're gonna set them equal to zero multiply the resulting expressions by each other and then we'll get what the polynomial function is okay all right so let's do it first one we need to find the roots what are the roots of this polynomial uh, function the roots are the x-intercepts right um, let's see so we have this is the x-axis so wherever the graph cuts the x-axis is the x-intercept so we have a, an intercept here an intercept here and an intercept here so this value is two negative 2 this one is uh, 1 and this guy right here is um, 2 so we have three roots or solutions or x-intercepts to this polynomial function alrighty let's go ahead and write that down so we have all uh, the roots are x equals negative 2 um, x equals 1 and x equals 2 all right next step we're gonna set the roots to 0 set to 0 we are unsolving this equation kind of sorta all right so how do we set them how do we make them equal to 0 so I need this negative 2 on the left side what do I combine with negative 2 so it becomes 0 combine the opposite right the opposite of negative 2 is plus 2 so you add 2 to both sides of this equation and what does that result you end up with uh, x my um, x plus 2 sorry x plus 2 equals 0 over here I need this one to become 0 so what do you do to positive 1 to make it 0 you combine it with its opposite the opposite of positive 1 is negative 1 so you subtract 1 from both sides x minus 1 is 0 and then lastly here what you do you subtract you do the opposite of plus 2 which is subtract 2 from both sides all right okay so you do that and then you end up with x minus 2 equals 0 all right so they've all been set to 0 now excellent now the next step is to multiply the left side the resulting expressions on the left side these are the factors okay so multiply the factors so uh, so if we multiply the left side this is the reversal of the zero product property okay so remember the zero product property if you're working backwards this is what you get okay so set equal to zero now we're going to multiply now if you notice x plus 2 and x minus 2 there's something special about those two let's put them next to each other so we have x plus 2 times x minus 2 or let's do this if you look at the options that we have 
uh, x my x the one the one the component with one comes first so let's put that first okay so it's similar to what we have so let's put x minus one first and then x plus two times x minus two so that takes us to the question when you are multiplying factors does order matter yes or no I'd like you to put your answer in the comment section below let's see if it matters or not if you say it does matter explain why if it doesn't matter explain why if you say you can multiply in any order then what property of equality are you referring to or provides you basis with doing that the fact that we are reversing the order of factors being multiplied by each other here clearly shows that it's it's a legal process but we want to know what you think okay x plus 2 times x minus 2 that should help you remember a particular expansion of factorization formula a plus b times a minus b is the factored form of a difference of squares a square minus b square so if you have x plus 2 times x minus 2 do you know what that's going to be it's simply going to be x square minus 4 okay so this is known as the difference of square formula now let's assume you don't know this okay so we, we have to multiply these two because all the options involve some kind of x plus or minus one component and uh, the product of the other two factors so if you don't know this trick it's okay you just multiply it out first outer inner last bam just multiply it right okay so we bring down x minus one and if we multiply this out, we have x times x is x squared. Uh, x times minus 2 is minus 2x plus 2x plus 2 times minus 4 is minus 4 equals 0. And then we can simplify further. This would give us, what would that give us? It would give us um, x minus 1 times x squared. You notice that the middle terms can be combined. They are first degree terms here, like terms, but they are opposite. So they basically take each other out right and then we're left with x squared minus 4 equals 0 and we see where this plays a role right all right so this is the related polynomial equation the function is f of x equals uh, x minus 1 times x squared minus 4 the answer to problem 8 is option number 3 all right so this is the function that when graphed will generate this result right here okay another way you can do this problem is you just plug in these functions into the graphing calculator and then you will see which one results in a graph that looks just like this all right so let's take a look at how to do this using the graphing calculator of course, if you're doing it with a graphing calculator, you have to graph all four and see which one matches. We already know what the answer is, so I'll just show you how to graph the correct answer, and then you will see how it compares with the graph, okay? So f of x is your y. We're just going to enter the right side of the equation. So we have x minus 1 times quantity x squared, x raised to the second power, minus 4. Hit enter and then graph bam so you see how graph number three matches perfectly with what we have um, on on the left right here all right so some of you might wonder it's much easier or faster to use a calculator to determine if a function has a particular graph or not so that takes us to the following question if you can simply use a graphing calculator to establish what the look of a function is, is it necessary to be able to determine if a function has a particular graph algebraically or manually? Okay, so the question is all this work we did right here to come up with the final answer, is that necessary with the availability of a calculator? Let us know what you think, just post your answer in the comment section. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. As indicated earlier, we would like to know what you think. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your preparation for the upcoming Regents exam, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very important to us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We update our 
page with math videos almost every single day so um, subscribe so you can get updates to the um, uploads that we've made if you have any questions comments or special requests for presentations you like us to work on just post it in the comment section below a lot of support resources can be found on our website mattgotserve.com do check it out thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day goodbye